Namaste. Welcome to the next video of Machine Learning Techniques course. In this video, we'll discuss kernel SVMs. Kernel SVMs are used for nonlinearly separable data. So far, we were performing nonlinear transformation in the input feature space and then training the model in the transform space for learning nonlinear decision boundaries. So remember the polynomial transformations that we applied in linear regression and logistic regression. So SVM computes dot product in transform feature space without explicitly calculating the transformation as part of its kernel function. And we will see this kernel trick with an example of a polynomial transformation. And by performing the transformation to the higher dimensional space, we hope that we will be able to find a linear separating plane between the two classes in the transform space. So in order to represent the SVM, SVM dual objective function in form of a kernel function, what we do is we take this particular vector product which is xi transpose into xk which is product between ith feature vector and kth feature vector and we replace that with the kernel. So we have kernel function of xi and xk and the usual constraints are, are copied as they are in the SVM dual function. So kernel basically performs dot product between input feature vectors in high dimensional space without actually projecting or transforming the input features in that space, which is a big deal because we are saving time for required for transformation and then calculation in the transform feature space. So here what we do is we calculate the dot product in the original feature space and then we apply a mathematical function in order to get the dot product in the higher dimensional space. So for example, there is a linear kernel which is k of xi comma xj and linear kernel is nothing but the vector product between xi and xj. The polynomial kernel is represented as 1 plus vector product between xi and xj or a dot product between xi and xj. So we calculate the dot product between xi and xj, we add 1 to it and then we raise the power of this computation by degree d which is the degree of the desired polynomial. And there is one more popular kernel which is radial basis functions and the way we calculate radial basis functions for two vectors xi and xj by performing the square of the difference between the between the feature vectors and dividing it by sigma squared and of course multiplying it by minus 1 and the resulting number we basically apply or on the resulting vector we apply the exponential operation and by applying the exponential operation we obtain radial basis function kernel. Let us understand the kernel trick with a concrete example and here we take a polynomial transformation. You have two feature vectors a and b and first what we will do is we will first calculate the polynomial transformations of individual vectors and then perform the dot product in the transform space and we will show that this dot product is some function of the dot product of these two vectors in the original feature space. So by performing the transformation of A with the second order polynomial, we get A1 squared, square root of A1, A2 and A2 squared. This is the transformed representation. Similarly for B, we get B1 squared, square root 2, B1, B2 and B2 squared. And when we perform this vector vector multiplication, we get A1 squared into B1 squared to 2 times A1, B1 into A2, B2 plus a2 squared plus b2 squared. Now we can rewrite this as a1 b1 plus a2 b2 whole square. And this can be rewritten in a dot product format which is a1 a2 trans transpose into b1 b2. So this is a vector vector multiplication form. This can be written in a dot product format as the dot product between a and b and we raise the the resulting, the resulting number or resulting dot product by 2. So what is happening here? So if we observe this equation, we are performing this vector vector multiplication or dot product in the 
in the original feature space and then we applying the square transformation on the dot product in order to get the dot product between these two features in the transform space. So there is a small change in the inference when we use kernel SVM. So here in the inference we have sign of sum over all entering example alpha i y i into the kernel function of x i and x. x is the new feature vector or the new data point for which we want to make predictions plus b. Now alpha i is equal to 0 for all non-support vectors. So you can see that effectively this particular calculation will happen only for support vectors. So we have to take the new data point, we have to compute the kernel function for the new data point by calculating the dot product of the new data point with every support vector. We multiply that value with the label of the support vector and Lagrange multiplier alpha i for that support vector. So in this video we studied kernel SVMs. We studied the kernel trick and we saw the demonstration of the kernel trick with polynomial transformation example.